So we're actually towards the end of the course. So today it's gonna be a fun feature we're gonna make, which is gonna be a small chat system. So the player could actually type something, send it, and then a bubble will actually appear above his head. So we can start by going into our main game scene. And it's because I wanna actually drag the player here. And we will have some kind of an input field right here below, and it is going to be inside of the player itself. So let me open the prefab. Inside of the overlay canvas, I'm going to create an empty object, call it as chat bubble panel. I'm going to stretch it all the way by using the alt key. And then inside of that, I will be creating the input field text mesh pro. This is going to be again at the left side, holding the left alt. And as you can see, it's down there. So I'm just going to play with the position and with the color. You can just follow my lead. So I'm going to make it the color as... I'm going to make the color as black. Just fade it a bit. Then maybe changing the text color so I could actually see it. So it's going to be something as this. So I actually want to change the color. And also I will make sure to make it enable or for the wrapping. It's gonna say, let's see, I'm gonna put right here, type something. So I think it does look fine. Yeah, it seems fine enough. So this is gonna be the chat input field. And we wanna have some kind of a bubble above the player. So you can either use these graphics or maybe bring something of your own. I'm gonna be using this one. So I'm gonna put it under the text tools folder inside of other. And now I want to put it inside of the canvas world space. So right here I'm going to be creating an empty object, call it as bubble speech parent. And then inside of that I will be creating the image and then applying the bubble sprite right here. So I just want to play with the size, as you can see it is fairly huge. So all I can do is actually copying the black rect component, so copy component, and then paste it. So now we could actually see it, and clicking on the set native size. And now I will just play with the position. It's going to be something as this. Inside of the object, I will be creating another object, and call it as pivot. And the image is going to be inside of the pivot itself, because I actually want to do some nice animation that will pop out from this location. So it is important to make sure to put it here, and then the image will be inside. And now the animation will look something as this. And make sure to be set on pivot right here to actually see the pivot and not the center. So I will just reduce the scale a bit, something as this. And now inside of the image, let's create here a text mesh pro. I'm gonna stretch it all the way and change the color to a bit of a gray color. And I'm just gonna say blah, blah, blah. Just seeing how it's gonna be wrapped. It's gonna be something as this. And I am gonna be using the enabled option, but not overflow. I'm gonna be using this thing. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It will just give a few dots if the text is too large. And if you really want to be a big brain, you can even set the dimensions of the image itself. But that's more of a UI tutorial, I suppose. So I'm just going to call this image as bubble image. And now let's create a fairly easy animation here. So animation animator, and you'll see that it goes directly to the graphics animator. We want to actually add a component here called animator. And now it goes directly to this one. So creating a new animation inside of other, I'm going to be calling it as bubble speech in and also out. So let's hit the record key and I'm going to be controlling the pivot itself. So at the beginning, it's going to be zero, zero and zero. And then at the half of the point, it's going to be one, one and one. At sample number 10, I'm just going to increase it a bit to give this nice animation. And then I want to return to the value of one, one, one. So copying this one by doing control C and then pasting it right here. And now the result is something as this. Now if we go into the animator itself, you'll see that it now directly goes to this animation. It's something we actually don't want. So let's create a new empty animation. I'm going to be calling it as idle and set this one to be the default. And this one is going to be called from any state. So from any state. And the condition we want to have is some kind of a trigger. So in the parameters, I'm going to be creating a trigger called open, passing here the condition of open. And I am going to be disabling the fixed duration, I don't want to wait. And from the bubble speech, after some amount of seconds, I actually want to do the out animation. So we can duplicate this by doing Ctrl and D, calling it bubble speech out. And this one is going to be in. And now this one is going to be played at the speed of minus one. And from the speech in, I'm going to be making a transition. And here we actually do want to have an exit time as we want to wait some time before actually doing the out animation. And I'm going to put here 20. 
Now pay attention that at the moment it is just enabled and we will actually see it during runtime. So we actually want to disable it on start. Now we can either code it, which will take a long time and will be the smartest choice for optimization. But in this case, I want to make stuff as simple as possible. So let's create a new animation for the item. In the animation window, I'm going to be creating a new animation, create a new clip and it's going to be bubble speech idol. I'm just gonna hit the record key and the only thing that this is gonna do is set the scale value to be zero. Now the thing we want to do is actually replacing this one to be this one. So automatically once the animator is running it will play the idle animation which will just disappear the whole object. So I'm gonna say set state machine default state to be this one and then deleting this one. Now if you go into the animation itself Oh, I accidentally actually put it in the textures folder. I'm just gonna move it into the animation folder. Inside of the bubble speech idle, we want to make sure that it is looped as it is, but the in and out animation should be played only once per trigger. So we want to make sure to disable the loop time. Now let's save the project if you are working with the parallel sync, and now we can actually start the coding aspect. So inside of main game, I will be creating a new class, call it as player chat controller, and open it. Now this is going to be inheriting from network behavior as we are going to be using RPC in order to sync our text. So let us do network behavior and create a few serialized fields. The first one is going to be the text mesh pro, text mesh pro UI. This is going to be the bubble text. The second one is going to be the animator, private animator, bubble animator. And the last one is going to be a serialized field and it's going to be the input field itself. So the input field. TMP. I'm gonna be just calling it as input field. So what we want to do is that once a player is typing something and then pressed enter, we want to send the RPC. Once the RPC had been received, we want to show the bubble animation and showing the text. So let us do spawn. And here I want to check if this is my local player, only then enable this all object. So why am I saying that? If we go back into the editor, this class, the player chat controller, will sit on the chat bubble panel, so we can actually drag it. And this chat bubble panel is sitting inside of the player object, but currently it is just enabled on. So every player that will be spawned, we will have multiple input fields. So we want to disable and enable it depending on the condition if this is our local player. So yet again, make sure to drag it. And if we go back into the class, I can do something as var is local player equals to object dot input authority equals to runner dot local player and now game object this game object dot set active equals to local player now i want to say if this is my local player then i want to register to the event of some bidding something from the input field so unity has an easy api input field dot on some bit dot add listener and i'm going to be calling it as on input field some bit creating this function and in this case the only thing I want to check before actually sending the RPC is that if this argument is not null or empty so I'm gonna say if the string is not null or empty so string that is null or empty with the exclamation mark passing in the argument and if it is not I want to send the RPC with the value we received here so let us create an RPC the sources itself is gonna be the input of 40 as the guy that actually called this one is always going to be the local player. The local player is a guy that has an input authority over his player. Now the sources in this case are going to be actually all. This is because we want to run the following function on all of the machines, aka showing this bubble animation, updating the text, and so on. So I would call it as private void, make sure to call it with an RPC, set bubble speech, and it would take an argument called network string, and I will pass the maximum amount of characters will be 64, you can define it whatever you like, and call it as text. Now that we receive the text, all we need to do is actually bubble text, dot text, equals to text, dot value. And after that, just playing the trigger animation. So I'm gonna do a const string trigger, it is called currently open, and then bubble animator, that set trigger and passing it calling the rpc from here passing the argument and that's pretty much about it we can see how it looks although we'll have a small thing to fix and also do know that it's not going to be updated for late joiners so if somebody actually typed something the bubble appeared and immediately someone joined he wouldn't see that bubble as it's something i really don't think is necessary it will just appear for a few seconds if a player missed something then you know who cares to be honest but if you do want to make sure it will be updated for late joiners, make sure to wrap it with an RPC and with an on-change method. So let's save all and go back 
React Unity. Let's make sure to drag all of the variables right here. So the input field is gonna be here, the animator is the bubble speech parent, and the text itself is the text right here. Let's go to the player root object and do apply all to update the prefab, delete it, and see how it looks. So let's see, I'm gonna type I like food, press enter, and there you go, I like food. And after some time, it will disappear. Pretty cool. Now we do have this small issue of actually jumping and moving at the same time we actually type. So let's actually quickly fix that. Back at our code, we actually need a boolean saying if we are typing or not. And depending on that condition, the player could actually move or not. So let us do public static bool is typing. It's gonna be a get with a private setter. And if this is my local player, I wanna register to the input field once we actually entered it and once we actually left it. So I can do input field dot on select dot add listener. I'm gonna be using this lambda expression saying if we did select it, then we are typing or we are focusing equals to true, and I'm gonna duplicate this one, making sure that this typing equals to false, and instead of on select, it's gonna be on deselect. And now if we did select it, it will be true, once we left it, it will be false. So how can we actually control the player itself? If we go into the player controller class, you'll see that we have this general condition called accept any input. So the only thing we need to do is actually adding the if not player chat controller that is typing. If we are still alive, if the game match is not over, and if we are not typing, we can move. So let us save all and see how it looks. So you'll see that now if I'm actually typing something and trying to move, I actually can't. And yet again, if I send it, it will be sent. So I'm gonna join with another player to show you how it looks. So on the small window, I'm the client and I'm gonna type banana, hit enter. And you'll see that on the host, it is synced. So pretty cool stuff, I hope you enjoy this one. However, do know that the sorting layer of the world UI is currently above the player, so the bubble speech will actually be in front of the players. So in order to actually fix that, we can just drag it behind the player. So like this, save the project and uh, good job. I'll see you guys in the next one.